It's amazing how that people but I just. I thought he had to sing. Yeah. No, he didn't have to sing. That wasn't part of it. They adding to now. <laughs> Amen. Amen. It's good to be in the Lord's house. I, if you, it's your first time being here, I welcome you. I hope you don't feel as a stranger. One place you should feel welcome, that's at the house of the Lord. Amen. You ought to be able to feel loved and be able to feel free to worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. Um, I do want to say that um, I hope you come for the Word of God. Amen. Amen. If you have your Bible, stand with me and uh, turn to the book of Matthew chapter 9. God gave me a message homecoming, the night before homecoming. And uh, I said, Lord, I've already got somebody to preach for homecoming. But he gave me a message. I thought, well, maybe something will happen or maybe I'll preach it Wednesday. Or Well, Wednesday come around and I wasn't able to preach it. God, It was just blank. And I, I know God gave me the scripture. I know He gave me the uh, the ability to uh, pin them down, and He gave me the uh, the green light to do that. And I looked Saturday for to go back over that, and uh, He shut it down again. So I've been studying, and God, I feel like I got something that'll help you. I know it helped me, so I, I feel like it'll help you. Amen. Matthew chapter 9 and verse number 10. Uh, the Bible said that, And it come to pass, as Jesus was at meat in the house, behold, many publicans and sinners came and sat down with him and his disciples. And when the Pharisees saw it, they said unto his disciples, Why eateth your master with publican and sinners? And when Jesus heard that, he said unto them, They that be whole need not a physician, but they that are sick. Amen. But go ye and learn what, mean, what, what that meaneth. I will have mercy and not sacrifice, for I am not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. Amen. Father, I ask you to bless the reading of your word. And God, I pray that you title it in the heart of each one. And God, I pray, Lord, that there be nothing that would hinder the, the move of the Spirit of God or your holy word to go out. Lord, let me hide behind you. God, may they see Jesus. In thy holy name I pray. Amen. You can be seated. The Pharisees, and they still do, I want to say, find it quite odd that Christians are out amongst the world. The Lord Jesus told His disciples, you're in the world, but you're not of the world. Now, uh, they accused Jesus of being uh, with uh, publicans and sinners, and they accused His disciples of hanging with those, but I want you to notice what they weren't doing. They weren't getting drunk with them. They weren't partying with them. They weren't running to the same excess as right as what they were. They were just amongst them, and they were lifting up the Lord Jesus Christ. And isn't that what we are to do as the light of the world? And yet you'd have people, uh, church folk, that will get angry with you if they see you uh, with a sinner. Well, how in the world are you going to win them if you don't get around them? Amen? Amen. Amen. Now, I, now, you shouldn't be uh, partaking in the sin that they're doing, and uh, you shouldn't run to the same excess of right, but my goodness, you're going to have to be uh, present to be able to sow some seed. And it's going to cost you some of your time, and it might cost you to help them here and there, and it might cost you uh, to befriend somebody and to be a friend to somebody. It may, it may involve some things on your part, but I'll tell you what, great will be your reward in heaven. Amen. And he that giveth of his substance or of, or of his strength or of his ability, friend, God will repay you for that. The Bible said in Psalms, he that lendeth to the poor, amen, the blessings of the Lord is on him. But uh, if you remember Wednesday night, I preached Matthew eleven twenty eight 28, when Jesus stood out amongst the crowd and he said, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden. And that's the call that the Lord still is giving even today. But Jesus said here, He said, They that be whole need not a physician, but they that are sick. And Jesus came to seek and to save that which was lost. Uh, coming unto Jesus 
To come unto the Lord Jesus Christ is to come unto Him and it's a leaving of the world and its love. It's a, le a leaving of the world and its ways. What does it mean to come unto the Lord Jesus Christ? It means you turn from the world, you turn from your own ability to be good and to, uh, to meet God's requirement. You come to God and say, Lord, I'm guilty, but I believe what you said about your son. I believe that you gave him to be the propitiation, the sin sacrifice, the atonement for the sin of the whole world. And I'm entrusting all my trust to that. And I'm looking Looking unto Him as the author and the finisher, as the captain of my salvation, as my great God and Savior. When you come to the Lord, listen. When you come, when the Lord said, Come unto me, all ye that labor and heavy laden, there has to be a turning away from the world. That's what he said in 2 Corinthians 5 and 17. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. I understand why a lot of people think, and they get legalistic about it, that they think you've got to stop this and stop that and then come to God. Because most people that are saved have a new life. They become a new new creature in Christ Jesus and it wasn't they didn't stop these things to be the new creature it was a product of the life that come inside of them and I understand why people look and say, boy, them Christians, they don't do this and they don't do that and, and they're this way and that way. But what it is, is they lost a hunger for some of those things. And I ain't, I'm not saying or suggesting that you couldn't fall back into anything. Sin is a cruel taskmaster. But what I'm saying, when you called out of darkness into His marvelous light, you're freed from the power of sin. And I thank God for that. Listen, it's a leaving of our way in First John chapter two. First uh, John chapter two and verse fifteen, he said, "Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him." When I got born again, the first thing I began to notice was people blaspheming my God, taking His name in vain. It caused my ears to close up when I'd hear people do it. And I asked them not. I said, why do you want to blaspheme God? And they said, well, I don't mean anything by it. And I said, well, He takes it personal. And you're going to stand before Him one day. Amen. Now, I had blasphemed God before I was saved, but they something took place down inside of me. They something that took place. What is it? It's new life. You become a new creature. The seed of God was sown into your soul, and God pa passed you from death. There was a birth that took place, a spiritual birth. I remember where I was at. I don't remember where I was at when my first birth took place. They tell me it was at St. Mary's Hospital. I don't know if that's true or not. But I remember where I was when my second birth took place. I remember it just as clear as day. Amen. I, I know the place and I can take you to it. They've remodeled that building several times. I may not get the exact spot, but I know the general vicinity. And I do know who came and took up his abode inside my soul. I'm not a Christian because I'm a Baptist. I'm not a Christian because I go to church. I'm a Christian because I've been born again. I have received the atonement of my soul. The Lord said here in 1 John 2 and 15, Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world is the lust of the flesh, and the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world passes away, and the lust thereof, but he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. You see, Luke 13 and 3 says this. Luke chapter 13 and verse number 3, he said, I tell you nay, except ye repent, you shall all likewise perish. There's a, a false doctrine going around that they call it, I don't know what they call it, grace teaching, I guess. To where a person can just believe some things about Jesus and then they're Christianized. Get baptized somewhere and, uh, you know, just no change in life, no change in soul, no change in anything. Just ad adhere to the fact that God gave His only begotten Son and you say, yeah, I believe that. 
But the Bible's, listen to what he said in James. He said, Thou believest there is one God, thou doest well. The devils believe and they fear and tremble. And there's no saved devils. There's a difference in just agreeing to the fact and having a mental consent to the fact and saying, yeah, I believe that's what happened. He has to be your Savior. You have to take Him as your Lord. There has to be a change in your life before you have salvation. You say, well, I've been religious my whole life. That ain't salvation. If you remember, Saul of Tarsus was religious. And Nicodemus was religious. And there was a lot of religious men. As a matter of fact, most of the disciples were religious before they were saved. Amen? What does it mean to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ? It means to have a repented heart that you're doing an about face. And that you believe on Him. Listen to what um, 1 John chapter 5 says in verse number 9 he said if we receive the witness of man the witness of God is greater we have the witness if you're truly saved if you've truly passed from death unto life you have the witness in yourself it matters not what a preacher says I mean really it matters not what, what a preacher says my mother got real concerned over her salvation because she just couldn't get happy like she saw other Christians praising the Lord, lifting up their hands, shedding tears, laughing, uh, just praising the Lord. And she envied that. But she wasn't willing to do what it took to get that. You see, my mother had a real faith that was in the Lord Jesus Christ. And there had been times in her life that she had the joy of the Lord as her strength, but not as a consistent, ongoing thing. You see, she failed to do what First Peter tells us to do, to lay aside all malice. Amen? What, let's look at real quick in First Peter. I'm digressing just a little, but it'll be okay for just a minute. In 1 Peter, he said, I, I bet it's, let me find it. Where he said, lay aside, okay, 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 1. Wherefore, laying aside all malice and all gall and hypocrisies and envies and all evil speaking, as newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word that ye may grow thereby. My mom had failed to do some of those things. First of all, she wasn't a daily... Uh, going to the scriptures for food daily. And therefore she wasn't getting spiritual nourishment. But she watched the soaps daily. And she got a carnal nourishment. And she took this stuff into your mind. And you take that. You say, oh, watching TV's bad. Listen, if all you have is a carnal garbage coming in your mind, you better believe it's bad. It'll affect your thoughts. You'd be surprised how stuff is placed down. If you Evil communications corrupt good manners is what the book says. Amen? And if you have no input of the Word of light, the Word of God, if it's not steadily coming into you, you're not going to have a very good guide. Because David said, the word, Thy word, O Lord, is a lamp unto my feet. But if you don't have His word in your heart, where's the lamp? It's been put out. By what? By secularism. By worldliness. By ungodliness. Amen. He said in Romans chapter 12 and verse 1, I beseech you there, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. You say, how do you renew your mind? Through the Word of God, through prayer. And a lot of Christians can't have the joy that they see others have. And they wonder, well, the, why don't I have joy? It's because you're not renewing your mind. And because you're not feeding your soul other than the things of the world. You say, well, I've been in church my whole life. You'd be surprised how little people have read the Word of God. How little people do read. They expect the preacher to do it for them. And I, I don't care how good your preacher is. He can't do that for you. Amen. The 2 Timothy 2.15 tells us to study to show thyself approved unto God. A workman that needeth not be ashamed, rightly dividing the words of truth. Do you know what I got born with when I got my second birth? When I believed on the Lord? I have an appetite. I have an appetite for for spiritual things. 
also have an appetite for carnal things. That's the dual nature, the atomic nature that I have. I have to deal with that. There's a constant warfare going on. Galatians said it's the flesh lusting against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary, the one to the other. You say, which one wins, preacher? Whichever one you feed the most. You get up and you leave God out of your day, you're going to have a carnal day. You're going to have some problems. You're going to have some darkness. Amen, amen. Amen, preacher. That's the truth, church. I'm telling you the God's honest truth. You want to have a spiritual church? Well, the way you do it is to cast some things aside. I can't cast. You can't cast for me. You can't cast the junk that I allow into my life. I can't cast the junk that you allow into your life. But praise God, we do. We're more than conquerors through Him that loved us. And we do have power. The Bible said, For as many as receive Him, Christ, to them gave He power to become the sons of God even to them that believe on His name. you got power. Amen. The devil should not be able to get a, a one-up on you and to, to make you miserable in your Christian walk. And yet he does to so many people. He'll get something but somebody done them wrong and somebody said something and somebody didn't help or somebody helped too much or somebody didn't acknowledge them and the devil will get that and wear you out with it. Amen. You'll lose your joy, your power, your... It'll even take you out of service. It can take you right out. It sure can. The devil wants to take me out of service. He, he wants to take you out of service. Amen. He wants to render you impotent as far as spiritual uh, 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 quality in your life. He wants to render you useless. And the only way he can do that is for you to allow him to. Because 1 John 4 and 4 said, Ye are of God, little children, for greater is He that is within you. If you're saved, you're of God. And greater is He that is within you than He which is in the world. He that is in the world. Amen. So we have the power. The Bible tells us in 1 Corinthians, He said that God will not suffer you to be tempted above that you are able, but will with the temptation make a way to escape it. Amen. God will provide for His own. Now, which choice will you make? Have you repented? The Bible tells us in 1 John 5 and 9, He said, he said this, 1 John chapter 5, verse 9, I'm getting back to it now. If we receive the witness of men, the witness of God is greater. For this is the witness of God which He hath testified of His Son. He that believeth on the Son of God hath the witness in himself. If you don't have that witness, I wouldn't trust it. I don't care how long you've been in church. I don't care what you know. I don't care who you know. I don't care where you're accepted. If you don't have the witness of the Holy Ghost of God personally inside you that you know that you've passed from death into life, I wouldn't let up until I knew. There's nothing wrong with that. That's safe. And don't you want to know? Wouldn't it be something going to hell calling Jesus Lord? There's been them thousands of them. Thousands that's done that. People in false religions that thought, as long as I'm a member of this church, I'll make it. People that's walked the aisle and signed a card but never received the Savior. You'd be surprised what people have been told salvation is, but it's a new life. Let me tell you something. It is a, it is a life that's inside you. He that hath the Son hath life. He that hath not the Son of God hath not life. And so he said this, he said, He that believeth on the Son of God hath a witness in himself. He that believeth not God hath made him a liar, because he has not believed the, the record that God hath given, that God gave of his Son. And this is the record that God hath given unto us eternal life, and this life is in his Son. He that hath the Son hath life, he that hath not the Son of God hath not life. These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that ye may know that ye have eternal life and that ye may believe on the name of the Son of God. Now I want you to see, Luke said, or the Lord said in the book of Luke 13 and 3, Nay, except ye repent, ye shall all likewise perish. There has to be a turning away from self-righteousness, the world, the flesh, and the devil, and turning to God as His righteousness. I want you to think about that. It has to be that. Now, I know people that, that got saved and 
there was that witness of the Spirit of God. They had the witness of the Spirit of God on them. And then the devil, they gave place to him. And then he got a stronghold in their life. And he got them out of church. They ruined their marriage. They ruined their, their whole life. And then they get back in. And that's happened. I can't tell you the times that's happened. It can happen to you. It can happen to me. It can happen to anybody. It can happen to anybody. And it'll happen to everybody that gives place to the devil. Because he's no respecter of person. Believe me, if he has his way, he'll close the doors of this church. He'd shut it down. But listen, God is the author of the church. He is the foundation. He is the rock. Paul said, I have laid the foundation and another build thereupon. But let every man take heed how he buildeth on that foundation. And the foundation... Listen to what the psalmist said in Psalms 100 and 119 and verse number 59. In Psalms 119 verse 59, he said, I thought... Let me say verse 58 and 59. He said, I entreated thy favor with my whole heart. Be merciful unto me according to thy word. Here's what he said, I thought on my ways and turned my feet unto thy testimonies. He didn't say, I thought on my success. He didn't say, I thought on my record, how good I've been, how much I've achieved. He didn't say, I thought on my possessions. He said, I thought on my ways. You see, what we have at death is going to be left behind. Everything I accumulate here, my wife and kids will get, or whoever else gets it. Government will get something, I'm sure. <laughs> But you don't take anything out of here except who you are and what you've done. And that's going to follow you through eternity. What we are and what we've been following is going to follow us throughout eternity. What we've done for the Lord is going to be the only thing that's going to count. Amen. And uh, so I began to think, as I was studying this last night and early this morning, I began to think on my ways. I begin to think on not your ways. You're going to give an account for your ways. See, every time you go to think about your ways, the devil wants to say, well, what about so-and-so? You're doing better than this. And, and he tries to get you to compare yourself with others. Guess what? They're not the template. The Lord is. Amen? So I thought on my ways, and I begin to look at my ways. and I, I thought about my deliverance. In Colossians 1 and 12, I thought about what God had done for me and what has been manifested in my life. In Colossians 1 and 12, he said this, he said, Giving thanks unto the Father, which hath made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light. Who hath delivered us from the power of darkness and translated us into the kingdom of His dear Son. In whom we have redemption through His blood, even the forgiveness of sins. Who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature. For by Him were all things created that are in heaven, that are in the earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. All things were created by Him and for Him. And He is before all things, and by Him all things consist. And I got to thinking about my deliverance and what God has done for me. And I think about delivered me from the prisons of Satan. Satan will take you captive, buddy. I'm telling you, church, he wants to captive. He wants to get your time. One of the things he's after is your time, because you only allotted each of us are allotted the same amount of time. What are you going to do with your time? You're going to give God any of it. Pee Wee said we're getting ready to have a, a youth day over here, and it's not just for the youth; it's really for the church. But it's to be able to reach some of the younger people and uh, have a good time in the Lord but our, our main one of our main purposes is get the gospel out to let them know that Jesus loves them and if you can do it by whatever vehicle as long as the word of God is the foundation and the gospel is the foundation hallelujah for it amen 
I know people have got people to come to church to hear gospel singing and they've gotten saved. I know we had we went and had a, a softball challenge in other churches and that, those churches got lost people to come and play for them and we got lost people to come and play with us and uh, they didn't know that we was going to have preaching before it started. And I, we've seen three people get saved because of a softball game. Tony preached there one time. I remember the message he preached. He said, It's not my word like a fire, like a hammer that breaketh into pieces. Amen. Is my word not like a fire that burneth up the shaft? He, he began to preach the word. And, and I tell you what, God blessed it. Amen. There's been all kinds of avenues. You might invite somebody to your house for dinner. Just to be able to share with them the gospel of your salvation. You, there's a lot of avenues if you just say, God, what can I do? Lord, show me how to win somebody. Help me, God, to be the, be the feet and the hands that carries the gospel. You see, you're only allotted so much time. And everybody don't have the same job that you do. Everybody's job is different. Preachers are the world's worst of this. If they get a radio broadcast and you don't have one, you're just not doing the Lord's will. Or if they go to a nursing home and you don't go to one, you're just not. Or if they go to Haiti and you don't go to Haiti, I mean, get it out where you can. Thank God for those that, that are fulfilling the call in their life. Amen. We try to take out the Word of God out over the airways, over the internet. Uh, we've had a radio broadcast for years. Uh, we've uh, ceased to have that over, over the, uh, the radio part, but we still have the internet that we're lifting up. The Word of God goes out in tracks. It goes out in tape. And hopefully it goes out through the congregation. Amen. It's supposed to. It sure is supposed to. Listen. The psalmist said, I thought on my ways, and I began to think on my ways, and I thought about my deliverance, I thought about my defeats, my carelessness about spiritual things at times. You wouldn't be careless with spiritual things, would you? Let the, let the opportunity slip through your fingers, have opportunity to, to share Christ, have opportunity, I, I have, I have been careless at times about spiritual matters and I've been cold in times about my service. I'm not proud of those and at the judgment seat of Christ there'll be some wood, hay, and stubble that'll go up. Yeah. Amen. But I'm glad that there'll be some gold there. Whew, glory. And I'm glad that there's going to be some precious stones and some silver. What he's brought forth, you, brother. Amen, brother. It's only what He brings forth. But the, the witness of God bears witness that it's of Him and it's not of me. Amen. 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 In 1 Corinthians chapter 3. In 1 Corinthians chapter 3. and verse number 10, Paul said this. He said, According to the grace of God which is given unto me as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation, and another build thereupon. But let every man take heed how he buildeth thereupon. For other foundation can no man lay than that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Now if any man build upon this foundation gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, stubble, every man's work shall be made manifest, for the day shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by fire, and the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. This is for Christians only, Amen. for the church. And if any man's work abide which he hath built thereupon, he shall receive a reward. And if any man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer loss, but he himself shall be saved, yet so as by fire. Know ye not that ye are the temple of God, and the Spirit of God dwelleth in you? If any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy. For the temple of God is holy, which temple ye are. Let no man deceive himself. If any man among you seemeth to be wise in, his, in this world, let him become a fool that he may be wise. For the wisdom of this world is foolishness with God, for it is written, He taketh the wise in their own craftiness. And again, the Lord knoweth the thoughts of the wise, that they are vain. Therefore let no man glory in man, for all things are yours. Whether Apollos, 
whether Paul or Apollos or Cephas or the world or life or death or things present or things to come, all are yours. And you're Christ and Christ is God. Amen. 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 Listen, I thought of these things and I, I thought about them and I thought about my repentance. There's been times I've went to the Lord and I try to, I try to stay prayed up daily. But there's times I've went to Him with a broken heart. And I've just spread out before Him. And I said, God, I'm a failure. I don't know why you don't just take me out of here right now. And I confess like 1 John 1 and 9 says that if you will confess your sins, that if you confess your sins, He's faithful and just to forgive you your sins and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. But like salvation, when you really repent, there comes a change. Because if there's no change, there was no repentance. Listen to what he said in Proverbs chapter 28. Proverbs 28, 13, he says, He that covereth his sins shall not prosper. God said, no matter what you do, it's not going to prosper. I don't care who you align yourself with. I don't care what you say. It don't matter how well you paint it. With what kind of brush you stroke it with. He that covereth his sins shall not prosper. But whoso confesses and forsaketh them shall have mercy. Now, God wants to forgive more than you want forgiven, but He can't show mercy until you turn from it and turn to Him. A lot of times we come to God and we say, excuse me while I sin, and God doesn't do that. He's not going to forgive you why you sin, but if you come to Him guilty before God and say, Lord, I have sinned against you. I've sinned against myself. I've, I've sinned, and Lord, I ask you to forgive me of my sin and cleanse me from it. He is faithful and just to forgive you your sins and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. The Bible said that he that covereth his sins shall not prosper, but whoso confesses and forsaketh them shall have mercy. Happy is the man that feareth alway, but he that hardeneth his heart shall fall into mischief. I thought about my defeats, I thought about my repentance, and I thought about the glory to be revealed. It's going to be worth it. There's a glory fixing to be revealed, church. We're living in Bible days right now. I mean, you can turn it on the television and see it. Iran has said death to Israel, death to Israel. The Bible says at, at the coming of the second coming, not the rapture of the church, but the second coming of the Lord, all nations are going to be gathered against Israel. And right now, those nations, Germany, uh, all of the nations, Iran, all of the nations around Israel, they hate them, Russia, they, Turkey, they hate Israel. Iran's just on the verge of getting a nuclear bomb. It says death to Israel and death to USA. Crazy president we got wants to give them the ability to do that. I hope Congress can block it. I pray they do. But even if they do, that don't mean that they're not going to be able to get this because they've done been to Russia and found out about ballistic missiles and maybe got even the plans of them. Who knows? But I tell you this, church, the powers that be are ordained of God. And this thing's going to happen just like the Lord said it was. I'm not going to fear about it. The Bible tells me the glory which shall be revealed. Turn with me to the book of Romans chapter 8. I'm about finished here, so those that are hungry, just hang on a minute. Romans chapter number 8 and verse number 18. The Bible said this, for I read, Paul said, he said, For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. God said there's something fixing to happen that's going to be so much glorious than what you think you're losing. See, the devil put inside people's head that you can do better doing it your way than you can God's way. You can do better by half-stepping than you can whole-stepping. And it's a lie from the pit. He wants you to think that if you just, you know, just go, I sing a song, all the way with Jesus is my statement unto you. But the devil don't want you to go all the way. He just wants you to go some of the way with Jesus. 
He don't care if you're a church member as long as you don't read your Bible and tell people about your Savior. He don't care if you're religious. It's a religious crowd that nailed our Savior to the cross. He just don't want you to have the righteousness of Christ on you. And He don't want you to walk in that. And He don't want you to walk in fellowship with the Savior because then you're dangerous to Him. Because you'll witness. Because you'll care for souls. Because you don't want to see nobody go to hell. Especially your loved ones. Especially your own flesh. Especially your nieces and nephews. Especially your own loved ones. You don't want to see them going to hell. I don't know anybody I'd want to go to hell. My worst enemy. He said in Romans 8 and 18, he said this, he said, For I reckon that the suffering of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. Us who? Christians. What kind of glory? Going to have a body likened to the Son of God. I mean, whew. All I've known is temptation. I've had, to, I've had to keep my flesh under subjection. Sometimes I do well, sometimes I don't. I've had to, to war. The Bible said there's a, a war that goes on inside of each of us. The flesh lusting against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. And it don't have to be a sexual way. It could be in uh, things you can heap up and hoard up and, and covet up to yourself. It works out. Believe me. There's, I heard Brother Lawson say this morning as I was getting ready to leave. He said, sin is sin. Whether it's homosexuality or lying. He said, people lie because they're liars. They're not liars because they tell a lie. They tell lies because they're liars. And there's acceptable sins. There's all kinds of acceptable sins. For instance, pride. You wouldn't get angry at a brother over pride. You wouldn't call that out as fast as you would drunkenness or blaspheming. And yet pride is the devil's sin. It's the very root of it. Oh yeah, we've all got things, but we wonder, why ain't God real? God is real. And He'll be as real to you as you'll let Him. You want more of God? Give Him more of you. You want, you want the Lord to manifest Himself in you? Then yield to Him. Say, Father, pray to Him. He's right there. He hears you. The devil's a liar. He's saying, nobody's listening to you. He'll say, He don't do no good. God ain't going to answer your prayer. Or maybe he'll tell you, you got plenty of time. Or you got plenty of time. Maybe your loved one don't. Maybe there's a blood clot inside their brain ready to cut loose and kill them. And the only gospel they're going to hear might be from you. Amen. Maybe the only Christian life they're going to see is yours. What kind? If you have a, a, a defeated Christian life, is your Christian life healthy? Is the Spirit of God manifesting in a way they can see Jesus in you? They ought to be able to. Sometimes I wonder if they can see Him, see him in me at all. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Sometimes I'm of little faith. But I found out what as much faith as a grain of mustard seed will do and it'll get the job done. Amen. He said that the glory that shall be revealed. You say, what glory is that? In Titus chapter number 2. Titus chapter 2 and 13, he said, Looking for that blessed hope and glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave Himself for us that He might redeem us from all iniquity. He saved me from all of it, not just the bad ones. He saved me from all of it. And He gave me power. You just got to use what He gave you. He said, And purify to Himself a peculiar people, zealous of good works. These things speak and exhort and rebuke with all authority, and let no man despise thee. Let me tell you something. People will despise you when you try to do right. Amen. Amen. They'll say, You're just taking it too far. They'll say, you're to this. Listen, when a person's right with God, they won't try to push. When, when God showed me, when I, I quit uh, doing some things, He didn't give me a campaign to attack everybody that hadn't. 
Amen? Now, I tried to take one up. It didn't fare well with anybody. People hated to see me coming. But I guess the same God that convicts you of a certain thing can convict others. Amen? When you have the life of God in you and you yield to Him, He reveals to you by His Word, by His Spirit. He said His sheep know His voice and another they will not follow. You ever had God just, I mean, you knew it was the Lord. I've had God say, take this, take so much money and give it to so and so. Now, it doesn't matter if you believe it or not because He didn't tell it to you to believe it. He told me to do it. Now, I knew, I know His voice and I did it. And He's told me to go pray for people and I go do it. He's told me to call people up and I've called them up. You say, oh, you got a line with God? No, but He speaks to me when He wants to and I speak to Him when I want to. I don't have to wait till Sunday. And you know what? You speak to Him when you want to. How much have you talked to Him lately? You speak to the Lord when you want to. How much have you talked to Him lately? I talk to Him all day long. I'll be working and talking to Him sometimes. Amen. Amen. Had a guy come in there and said, What'd you say? I said, I wouldn't talk to you. He said, Well, ain't nobody here but me. <laughs> I said, I was talking to the Lord. Amen. Amen. First Thessalonians 4.16 said, The Lord Himself shall descend from heaven. People laugh at you for believing that. How many believes the Lord Himself is going to descend from heaven? Amen. Why do I believe it? Because He said it. It was proclaimed by angels. He taught it. He said in John 14, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself that where I am there, you may be also. I hope and pray, church, that you can think on your ways to examine what kind of a, what state your relationship with God is. And that you can make the repair by coming to Him. You can talk to God all day long. We, don't, we just don't believe it or something because all of us, and I'm saying me and everybody in here, failed to pray like we should. And we failed... I was reading this morning, trying to get some, just get in the Word. I got up at 5 this morning and, and was reading, and or 15 to 6, I don't know, it was between 5 and 6. And I was reading, and uh, the Lord said to different ones that He was fixing to pray for, He said, do you believe I'm able to do this? When somebody, when, when people come and call for the elders of the church, do you believe Jesus is able to do that? Amen. He is. Yes. Yes. And He will. Yes. Amen. The Bible says if there's any sick, let them call on the elders of the church and have them pray the prayer of faith. I believe that. I get persecuted because we practice it here. Amen. I believe in the rapture of the church and the second advent of the Lord Jesus Christ. We get persecuted because we believe that. It's okay. It's a book. You, you take that part out of the book and you might, you've just gutted over two-thirds of the Bible. Amen. Father, I pray, God, as the heads are bowed and as eyes are closed, Lord, that we can take this Scripture and apply it to our hearts. Not looking at anyone else, God, but looking at ourselves. I pray, Lord, that each one can do a survey and, and Lord, just examine ourselves to see whether we're in a healthy relationship. Are we in the faith? Have we, have we wandered away from home? And God, I pray, Lord, that you draw back each one, that you'd bless this ministry. Bless this church's endeavor to lift up Jesus high and exalted. And God, I pray for our youth. I pray, Lord, for their friends and their cousins and nephews for their salvation. God, help us to reach them for Christ. And we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. You give your own self the altar call. Might take a little while. Amen. You're at liberty. <laughs>